So I was actually surprised with the number of hands that were raised when uh, uh, earlier with people who are interested in becoming or researching entrepreneurship. Um, and I'd like to, before I dive into some of the, the checklist and the do's and don'ts, um, just echo a few, a few more comments on the five characteristics that, uh, that Muhammad shared. Uh, so the, the, the mental toughness, the art of calculated risks. Uh, SubhanAllah, it, it, it goes, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people that are thinking about entrepreneurship, and I've, I've had a couple of attempts to you know, open your company, you know, try your own business, etc. We have a, you walk in sometimes with a different perspective of what does it mean to have your own business? Um, you walk in with an idea. Even, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Shark Tank and, and the lessons that you, that you pick in. How many, by the way, how many people work, watch or have watched Shark Tank? A lot, okay, perfect. Um, so we'll, we'll talk briefly about, about some, of the, some of the lessons that, that, that you talk because I think you'll, you'll pick up a lot of um, checklists of things that they grill. First of all, the idea itself, right? Pressure testing your idea. Is it viable? Is it, is it a real product, etc.? But for you as an entrepreneur, a lot of times it starts with an idea. And, and I've, had, I've had my own ideas that I've attempted to, to start, start a, a, a business around. But we're always thinking about the product or the service itself, right? Um, I can do this. I can create um, a, a company that offers this service and I can perfect the product and it's going to be better than all of the other products. I can create a widget. I can create a, a device. I can create a better mic, etc. But we're always thinking about what the product or the idea. The big uh, surprise for a lot of entrepreneurs that attempt to go into business with just a solid understanding of the product and stop, and not a solid understanding of the market, the ecosystem that you're walking into, not knowing, for example, that there are three products that does exactly the same idea. You haven't done your homework. And those are some of the things that you need to be prepared with. It's not just about your product. One of the reasons, actually, the, my story, one of the reasons why the, the, the company or the product that we uh, it was a great product. There wasn't a competition. There was not a product that does the, the exact same thing. But neither me or my partner were willing to quit our job and do what Mohammed was, uh, was referring to, sell. So we had a product development arm, but we didn't have a, a, a sales and marketing. And a lot of people who have the, the, the product development mindset, they may or may not be good in s selling the, 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 the uh, or what it, know what does it take to actually sell your product. It takes what channels are you going to use to actually go to market? Are you going to sell it online? Are you going to open a store? Do you need to open a store? Who is your target audience, etc.? A lot of those questions we had ideas about, but we were too busy fixing a product. We were too busy creating a system that does amazing things. But we didn't think about, or at least we didn't commit to dedicating a sales and marketing strategy to say, here's how we're going to go to market. Here's how we're going to sell it. Here's how we're going to start by selling the first 100 customers. Here's how we're going to get those first 100 customers that are going to allow us to become, to stand up on our feet, to, to fund the next and, and, and so forth. So that's going to be critical. Um, the ability to sell that Muhammad touched on is critical because your product may be the best product in the market. But if you can't tell that story, if you can't tell someone who may be your best customer, why should they use your product? What problems or what applications, what value is it going to solve for that customer? Then you fail. You may be sitting on a gold mine, but you fail. Um, SubhanAllah, there are two types of entrepreneurship. There are two types of uh, examples that, we, that we've seen. Um, there's the big disruption, and we've seen a lot of companies start, and within months, they became billion-dollar companies, right? Um, so I'm going to share with you just a couple of data points. Kodak, we all know, well, sorry, not everybody uh, know Kodak anymore. Kodak used to be the biggest name in digital media, photography, right? Best cameras, et cetera, Nikon and, and things, but they were the largest. At, at their peak in 1996, Kodak was $26 billion company with 140,000 employees. 
okay, 1996. Kodak was bankrupt in 2012 with, with 17,000 employees, not 140, 17. So major drop, bankrupt. Who took their market? Any guess? Instagram, photography, pictures. A lot of you guessed it, right? So Instagram, in 2012, the same year, their market cap was $1 billion with 13 employees, okay? So we're, this, is, this is entrepreneurs, right? They started within six months, 13 employees were able to take on a brand new segment. You know what the sad story is? Kodak had the technology in their company. They didn't, but they were too big, they were too slow. They, did, they, dis, they had a disconnect with the market. Again, knowing your customers, knowing the market, understanding who the value proposition and what of your services and, and as an entrepreneur is going to be critical. So going back to, to Shark Tank, we talked about um, they will help you watching the show, at least will help you understand, you know, how a lot of ideas come to market. What is the path that they took to sell to to get their initial, you know, first year? How much sales did you make? You know, did you sell online? Who, who are your customers? What are your channels? Are you selling through stores, etc.? A lot of those pressure testing ideas, are, uh, will, you, you'll, you'll watch them. But really the key thing is understanding the opportunity. For you as an entrepreneur, whether you're making a product that you're going to sell, or you're providing a service to somebody, or you're opening a store to, you know, to your distrib you're in distribution and channel uh, in, in uh, um, um, channel business, sorry, uh, supply chain is what is the word I was looking for. Whether you're in supply chain, distribution, or retail, etc., you need to understand the opportunity that you're that you're trying to tap into. Where is the revenue? What market? Who's your audience? Are you opening a store in a neighborhood? You need to understand the neighborhood. Are there other stores that are providing the same, uh, you know, com uh, competitive value, etc.? How unique is your idea? as you're positioning to your customer, et cetera. The, the feasibility, the viability, the desirability is key. Um, so ideas are great, but without that market knowledge, the ecosystem out there, that's where unto successful entrepreneurs versus ones that collapse. Um, Muhammad talked about uh, mental toughness. SubhanAllah, in sales organization, they say, the rate of successful sale closing sales is it's the 10th call that will win. Meaning, be prepared to lose nine times before you get your successful win customer that's gonna buy. That means you're gonna talk to nine customers that are gonna close their doors and not gonna buy from you. So being prepared to understanding, unless you have a very, very targeted, targeted marketing, targeted selling, that you know you're tapping into a very selective group, you're not gonna get you know higher than 10% closing. So that, Walking in with that understanding helps the mental toughness. I, it's not me. It's not that I have a bad product. That's just people are being selective. The consumerism of, of, of business now. People know that they, they, they're going to start shopping by comparing first. So understanding the trends of how people buy will help you do that. So let's talk about a few. Um, I, I put together a few kind of a, a list of um, a list of uh, a checklist of lessons learned um, for successful entrepreneurs. The first one is stay as close as possible to the end user. So if you're making a new product, let's say you're making, um, I don't know, a new phone case or you're making a new app for, um, for a, a, a targeted segment, not just any consumer, but for, it, for students, you need to be very close to understanding the usage scenario, how do those people, uh, how are they gonna use my product? How are they gonna benefit from my product? How is my product better than, than other uh, products or, or, or businesses? So stay as close as the end user of the product and service. That's gonna help you. A lot of companies, Kodak was a perfect example. Uh, Blockbuster went out of business, why? Redbox took them first and then Netflix took them. The disconnect between them and the customer they didn't realize that customers prefer streaming over rental. They, that, that was a major disconnect between 
the, the product or the service company and the end, the, the end consumer. So stay connected with their preferences, their behaviors. How do they prefer to use your product? What do they look for when they compare? The second one is as an entrepreneur, um, there's a concept called minimum viable. Minimum viable. A lot of entrepreneurs, they start by um, thinking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for three years until I perfect the product. It has to be perfect before it goes to market. Don't. Start with something small. So let's say you're making a car, okay? You're, you're, you're producing a car. You're, you're gonna wait three to five years to perfect the car. The minimum viable thinking says, okay, in the journey of making and selling the car, start, you can actually wait three years. Guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna drain funding. You're, you need to hire engineers you know, a, a factory of the car and all of that. So you're incurring a lot of cost for three years until you make your first car that you're gonna go to market, right? Minimum viable tells you what? Tells you, okay, start with a scooter. You can make a scooter, two wheels, a board. Within two months, you can get it out to market. And then connect with the buyers. Give them a scooter. The goal, the usage scenario of a car is to get you from point A to point B. Yeah, sure, a scooter isn't a car, but it gets you from point A to point B. You can put it in the hands of the user. You gave, what happens? You delivered value. The user isn't waiting for three years. Within three months, you were able to give them something, minimum, something small, but you gave them value. You connected with the user. You established a connection. After the scooter, maybe give them a scooter with a motor. Maybe then you three months later, it becomes a bicycle. Six months later, it becomes a motorcycle. Then it becomes a, a, a three, uh, you know, three wheeler or whatever, or, or uh, a four wheeler with an engine. And then maybe four years later, it becomes a car. What's the difference between the two scenarios? Scenario one, the customer is waiting for three years. You're paying a lot of expenses for three years without any insight on, am I connected? Somebody else might have took your customer away from you. So minimum viable is try to deliver value throughout the way. Throughout your product development, service development, you're always delivering value. You're always giving them incremental value and they're staying with you. They're connected with you. So continue, continuous value throughout the way. Scooter, bicycle, motorcycle, etc. Rather than wait four years to find out that they don't like your car. So the fourth lesson is what just happened? Rather than waiting, building you know, all of those expenses now you're in debt for God knows how much. Three years later, you find out that the car that you made isn't as good as the car. That, so you, that's a lot of risk. That's a lot of capital that, that was invested versus if the scooter failed, what just happened? Okay, you just invested three months or whatever and the cost that you invested is nowhere close. So the model is called fail fast. Prove your, don't wait too long until you prove the value of your product. Have a, a, a constant uh, fail fast, prove and move. I wanna, I wanna prove that I can actually give this value to my customer. I'm gonna prove it throughout the way. I'm not gonna wait two, three years. But, and by the way, your investors, the capital investors, aren't gonna wait four years for you to perfect your product. They wanna see results. They want to see tangible results throughout the way. So whether it's, it's your product that, or if it's a service, Start with something, always think, what can I deliver soon that will maybe give me revenue, maybe not, but maybe the value upfront three months, even if you gave the scooter away for free, you benefited because you connected with a customer. You established a customer base for that car that's gonna, that, that, that's gonna buy from you three, three years down the road. So pr prove, prove, uh, prove and move or fail fast, test and learn as you are developing your products. Um, don't be discouraged, it's a journey, right? Don't think that once you made your product, that's it, I'm gonna spend two years perfecting the right product, and that's it, I'm just gonna wash my hands and kick back and, and I'm just gonna go into sales mode. It's not like that. The actual journey is you're gonna put the first product out in the market. You're gonna get feedback from your customers or the, you're gonna open the first store. You're gonna get feedback, you need to tweak it. Stick to the customer, 
Follow, uh, they, they have a saying, follow the money. Follow their needs, their demands. What are they looking for? What problems are, is your products and services solving for your customers? Um, there's a big aha moment that, that a lot of people, subhanAllah, they think that um, they walked in with the exact same idea that they, that they, that they launched, sorry, they, they have the, the exact same idea that's going to make them a billionaire. 90% of the time, it's not. You have an idea, and as you are interacting with your customer, you're going to mature the idea. You're going to tweak it. You may actually uncover something tremendously bigger than your initial idea. So it may end up morphing into something else. So it's a journey. It's not that that's it. I, it don't get me wrong. There may be ideas that, yeah, you have it, you deliver it, it's valuable, etc. But most of the time in your interactions with the market, in your interaction, you may discover that, oh, you know what? Somebody has that exact same product, but what they don't have is this. I'm going to pivot. I'm going to pivot to what the market needs. Stick to the needs. Always have a good read on the market. That's a lot more important than having a good read on the product. Because guess what? If you can figure out a niche, an opportunity in the market, even if you don't have the product, you can can go to China and get the product. You can actually figure out easily how to make a product, but you can't easily figure out an opportunity. So try to first figure out an opportunity in the market for a specific user segment, target user segment, and how to sell it, how to close it, and then try to bring in the solution. Um, another kind of lesson learned is, and I think we, we touched on it briefly, is don't bury yourself in debt. In the journey, you don't have to, as they say, you don't have to, have to start with an office day one and hire a secretary and an employees and so forth and all of that. Start with the minimum. What is the bare minimum that you need to deliver the very first product that's going to bring you revenue? You may start from your garage. You can start work from home, etc. Minimize the bleeding up front. Don't load yourself with a lot of loans that are unnecessary. Um, that will help you optimize the, 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 the profit that you're gonna get from your products until you get actually a stream of income. Then you can expand a little bit. Then you can, if you don't need 15 employees, don't hire 15 employees. Start with the bare minimum that's needed for, uh, to, to deliver based on the phase that you have. And then last but not least, have a plan. Have kind of a, a vision. Muhammad touched on, your ability to, to, uh, to sell, I'm going to double click on that. Your ability to actually share your vision with your team around you. When, um, subhanAllah, when, um, if, if you remember before, uh, before Steve Jobs, there was a company called, it's sad that, that people don't even recognize, Palm. Anyone remembers Palm? Palm Pilot, Palm? For those who remembered Palm, the, the key, the power of Palm was the fact that it actually fits in your palm. The, the founder had a, had a piece of wood, a block of wood in his hand, and he used to walk around. That's how crystal clear his vision for his product was. He would walk around the company and he had a lot of innovative people that he hired. And they would say, well, I have this feature. You can put this great camera on the palm. And he said, would it fit in, in this? Would it fit in this? If it's bigger than this, then it cannot be. So again, he had a crystal clear usability was, was the biggest feature. Any feature that, that you can add to it is great as long as the, it does not impact usability. Um, so have a crystal clear vision of your product and what differentiates it and share it with the people around you. Don't keep it locked. The, the more people around you can actually share, it's not about um, make sure they sign NDAs, right? Non-disclosure, non non-compete. But the idea is your team needs to be 110% aligned on the idea, the value. What is it that they are doing to actually deliver on that? Um, so those were a few, those were a few um, kind of lessons learned, pitfalls that, that others have actually gone through uh, to, you know, in their journey of, of, of entrepreneurship. Um, for, for small, medium businesses, etc. I think what, uh, Muhammad touched on it. The idea of one plus one equals five, and inshallah we'll talk about it later on this afternoon. Um, 
keep, keep an open mind for growth. When, when Muhammad said, think big, don't limit your idea to a, to, to, to a small market. What if, play some what if scenarios in your head. What if you collaborate with someone? What if you put your product and add a new service to it, etc. cetera? So you're, you're thinking of a great device. Well, guess what? What if that device was part of a larger ecosystem or, or, or play some scenario, some, some uh, collaboration scenario that leverages potentially other products, other partnerships, strategic partnerships. Maybe, maybe it's, uh, I don't want to limit it to technology ideas, but it, it could be services, right? Um, Uber expanded their, their, their domain through what-if scenarios with you know, Uber Eats, delivery, and, and, and so forth. Keep, keep the same mindset of what-if scenarios, expand your horizon of the offerings and the value that it brings to the table.